Welcome to the Mind Body Business Show. The three keys to your success is just moments away. Here's your host, Brian Kelly. Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Mind Body Business Show. How are you doing tonight? This is going to be an amazing, amazing show. We have an amazing guest expert. I cannot wait to introduce her to you. Amazing, amazing person. She is part of a duo. It's a mom and daughter business. I cannot wait to dig in and find out the secrets to her success, to both her and her mom's success. It's an amazing, amazing thing. The Mind Body Business Show. Real quick for those of you that might be new to the show. What is that all about? Well, it's about the three pillars of success. In my now 55 years on this planet, I found that there were patterns that, were, that had developed amongst successful people, primarily successful people. And what I found was in studying them that in these three areas, like mind, that's mindset, they always had a rock solid, powerful, and just unwavering mindset. And that can be implemented, it can be extended, it can be reinforced using a proven science called Neuro Linguistic Programming, or NLP for short. And there are other sciences and other approaches to help with your mindset as well. Uh, but many of those that I found to be successful have gone down that path and have utilized uh, great tools and techniques in the NLP industry and world. And then there's body. What is that? Well, that's literally what it means. It's taking care of your body. The people that I have found that are most successful really take care of their body, both physically from the outside and nutritionally from the inside. And that is working out, exercising on a regular basis. Now look, if you're a guy, you don't have to look like Arnold did in his heyday. You don't have to be a massive bodybuilder to be uh, fit and operating at a peak level of performance. It just means staying busy, moving, do it on a regular basis, three to six times a week. And then nutrition, it's what you put into your body. You know, the good fuel in, that results in great results, right? So. It's those two elements, mind and body. Now, really, those are the foundation. It all starts with mindset, in my humble opinion, because if you don't have that rock-solid mindset, then you are not going to continue the habit, the nurturing habit of taking care of your body. And vice versa, if you don't take care of your body, now your mind is not operating at a peak level of performance. They're kind of like a team. More importantly, they're your team. And when you have any part or any member of a team that's not pulling their weight, so to speak, the team as a whole will suffer. Once you get those two put into place and you have that, you're, you're on the right track and you're mastering both mindset and taking care of your body, then there becomes the part that we're all aware of, and that's business. Here's the thing. Business is a multifaceted, multifaceted arena, and that means that it takes many different skill sets to be successful in one's business. The good news is you don't have to have or possess all of these skills yourself. You can outsource and scale, bring in help to help in that area. And if you're not doing that yet, then when would now be the right time to consider doing so, to get some outside help because then you can scale much faster. Business is so multifaceted. It's about marketing, it's about sales, team building, leadership, systematizing, the list goes on and on. And it can be very daunting for those just starting out if you're a solopreneur. Uh, that's why it'd be a very good idea to start looking into expanding your knowledge base by just expanding your team beyond you, and you'll find a great relief in doing so. And speaking of successful people, another thing I noticed uh, that is actually part of the mind component is they are avid, voracious readers. They read everything there is on business, on personal development, on fitness, all of the three components that make up a successful business person in, in business and in their personal lives. And with that, I like to switch over to a little segment I uh, affectionately like to call Bookmarks. Bookmarks, born to read. Bookmarks, ready, steady, read. Bookmarks, brought to you by reachyourpeaklibrary.com. Yes, reachyourpeaklibrary.com. Now, for those of you watching live or even listening right now, um, here's the thing. Uh, if, you're, if you have your phone out and you're watching or listening from that, or if you're watching on a computer, in both cases, just stay with the show. In other words, resist the temptation to go punching in a URL or a website address while you're watching. And the reason for that is because the magic happens in the room. And I get it. This is a virtual room. 
Uh, but it's very, very true. And I would hate for you to miss one golden nugget from our guest expert, Lorena Tomasini, who's coming on very soon, I promise. Uh, and so stay with us. And instead, rather than do that, do what I do. I'm actually running the show. And I also take notes with the old traditional pen and paper as uh, the show goes on. And then after the show, I review those notes and then go check out resources. Oftentimes, my guests, for instance, will come up with a great recommendation for, you guessed it, a book. And uh, what I do is I take those down and I end up buying those instantly right when the show is over on Audible. And then I will have it in my list, my own library, to read later. I'm literally reading one right now that I got as an actual referral from a past guest. And the reason I tell you this is because I highly recommend you do the same. Find those that are successful and whatever they're reading, read it. Because it's real simple. The, the, there is no big secret to success. It's really this. Find someone else who is successful that is at a level you wish to attain and model them. That's a fancy word for copy. Do what they do and you will find that you will reach a level of success that is greater than where you are right now on the way to reaching their level as well. It's that simple. Uh, I wish I could make it harder, but that's why I do this show because I bring people on like Lorena that you can then model, copy what she does, pick out those things that she's doing that maybe you're not and we'll get to that very soon. I'm not kidding, it's coming right away. Uh, and, and then um, just model what she's doing, model what I'm doing, and then you'll see greater success in both your business and personal life as well. And so this is a list of books that I've compiled that I've personally read. Uh, it's nowhere near complete. Uh, I've, I've stopped updating it a little while ago, uh, but there are many more books than on this list. This is a good start. There's about 40 of them in here. So this is literally a creation I put together for you with you in mind. Uh, really, it's not there to make money. It's there to have a resource or to present a resource to you. If you are not reading, um, then this is a great place to start. And it, all of these books I personally read and they have had impact on me in a positive way. Not every book I read has gone into this list, just to be clear. And so with this, at least you can have a filtered list of books by, that's been vetted by at least one successful person, uh, which then leads to you spending less time reading the incorrect books, the wrong books, the ones that aren't that great. Uh, so that's the reason I put that together. So feel free to utilize that resource. And again, that's reachyourpeaklibrary.com. Write that down. <laughs> Don't visit it now. Write it down and then visit it when the show's over. And speaking of the show being over, before it becomes over, we got to bring on our guest expert, don't you think? And hopefully my system will behave. Here we go. We're going to bring her on right now. I hope. Well, yes. Much quicker than I expected. Fantastic. We're having some fun times over here. And I want to introduce to you all, you see her name on the screen, Lorena Tomasini. How are you doing this evening, Lorena? I'm doing very well, Brian, and you? I'm doing fantastic. You know, it's all about being flexible, isn't it, Lorena? I mean, to be successful in business, um, you have to be flexible for so many different things. One being technology. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I can't tell you how many times I've done this show, uh, how many times I've tested everything. We tested right before we went live, didn't we, Lorena? Yes, we and did. And issues came up and things were different than I expected. But you know what? Just roll with it. And normally you shouldn't even call it out, call attention to it. But I'm using mm -hmm. this now for an example to help teach others that, look, things happen, go with it, be flexible. It's okay if it's not exactly the way you wanted it, it's gonna mm -hmm. be different. And you know what, sometimes even, sometimes when it comes in differently, you might go, my gosh, you know, I actually like that better. <laughs> it happens by accident sometimes. So a little, uh, little different direction there, but I wanted to bring on, um, I wanted to bring on Lorena, but right before we do that, everyone who's watching live, I want to let you know that you can win a five night stay at a five star luxury resort in Mexico. Compliments of my friends at powertexting.com. We're gonna show you how to do that near the end of the show. You must be on at the end uh, to then see how to enter to win that. We give out a, a vacation stay every single show every single show because of, you see it right there, our sponsors, powertexting.com. So stay tuned for that. Now, at last, let's finally bring on the fine young lady of the hour, Lorena. 
Lorena Tomasini is the owner of Malm Life and Health Insurance Agency in Miami, Florida, and she is part of a mother-daughter duo, and they work virtually to help families and businesses with financial protection with their 3D process where they, one, define, two, discover, and then the person, three, decides it's easier than ever Best of all, their prospects and clients can take care of these important matters all from the comfort of their own home or office while relaxing and get this, maybe even drinking coffee or tea while they're at it. That's amazing. <laughs> all right. Yes, Lorena. So finally, formally, I welcome you to the show. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing very well. Thank you. Fantastic. Now, that gives a little of a brief of what you're doing. You've been doing this for a number of years, yes? Uh, yeah, actually, last week I celebrated my 13th year. 13 mm -hmm. years. You don't look like you're old enough to be doing any business for 13 <laughs> years. Are you sure? I get that often. I started in college. Okay, or when you were in elementary school, maybe. But, uh, maybe, yeah. <laughs> love it. 13 years, so would it be safe to say you know what you're doing? I think so. I would hope. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And so it's it's cool to know that you have the acumen, the background, the experience to help people in this area. And and by the way, that's what Lorena loves doing. I could tell immediately by talking to her right before the show. That's one of the reasons she and her mom do this is to help people. Uh, the target they target small businesses and families, and they they're there to help you to get the best insurance for your dollar. Uh, and that's what I love mm -hmm. about this. Um, so that's great on the surface, and it gives us a little bit of background knowledge of the of your of what you've done in the past from more of a I call it a physical level but I like to dig deep and get into the mind so to speak of each of my guests to really find out what makes them tick I have a deep curiosity about that and mm -hmm. the reason is is because like I said in the beginning of the show the mind mindset is paramount to one success or failure depending and so yeah. you come off as a very positive individual uh, to me Lorena and when it when it comes to maintaining something like that, a positive attitude, that takes energy for people that, <laughs> I'm sure everybody knows that, to take uh, to, to remain positive even when things are going crazy. Like on this show, things are going crazy. It can take some extra energy to remain positive when things aren't going the way they should. So how mm -hmm. do you maintain that positive, productive, and successful mindset when going through all of the things that happen in a business and in life? How, how do you do that? How do you sustain that? Yeah, that, that's a great question, Brian. Um, yeah, so how to maintain what I like to call positive mental attitude or PMA for short. Um, I think it's very important that when something isn't going how you want it to go, take a moment to just breathe or do something else. Take your mind out of whatever the problem might be so that way you can come back more calm and um, with a new set of eyes to to the problem, you know. And definitely, yeah, be flexible because things will change and things might not turn out how you expect them to. Um, but, yeah, having that positive attitude really helps. Um, and a way of doing that besides breathing and those types of techniques is maybe having little quotes here and there um, that help you throughout the day. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like little quotes like on the wall or in front of you in your computer. Things like yeah. that. And, and always looking at, at the bigger picture, right? It's It might be a little problem now, but looking at, okay, why why am I doing this? Like, what what's the purpose of it? Oh, mm -hmm. very good. Having a why, a powerful why. Uh, that's yeah. always good. That's a great one. Uh, it's kind of like hitting the reset button. Like, you know, when things get really rough. In fact, that's what we train all the time is, um, you know, one of the greatest things for your mind is to have that very strong mm -hmm. why why do you do what you do why would you go through what you're going through because right. running your own business is not easy well maybe not no. not for me but maybe no. it is for you um <laughs> and have, if you don't have a powerful why you know for me i've gone through a process where we determine what our why is i've done it several times and out of curiosity i, I did it more than once and I found each time it was the same for me it's mm -hmm. a personal thing so it could be something yeah. different for every person for me it's my wife um, mm -hmm. I get up out of bed, I do what I do, I work my ever-living butt off because I love my wife and I do everything because I want to make her happy and I want our life together to be the best it can be. That's my why. doesn't mean it has to be anyone else's why with their spouse. Yeah, she's but, a, a lucky woman, it seems. 
Uh, I look at it the other way around, but thank you. Yes, I'm a very lucky man. I'm so blessed uh, to have. She's my high school sweetheart. Can you believe that? Oh, wow. Yes. We met in high school and never parted ways and married after college. And it's been one of those like Cinderella stories. Um, it's been yeah. awesome. Nice uh, to hear. Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> that doesn't happen too often anymore, I understand. Uh, but mm -hmm. that, that, like you said, it's very powerful to have a great why. And you said the word flexible as well, because mm -hmm. here's the thing. Uh, and you tell me if this is the same for you, uh, Lorena, but, you know, as you become if you work longer and more years and you become more successful, then everything just comes easier and you have fewer and fewer problems. Right. Yes and no. There, there will always be new new problems. Yeah. Uh, maybe, you know, things that used to exist as an issue are no longer. So, yeah. There's always something new to resolve or to do, you know, that's just like in general. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it, it would be boring if, if every, every day would be the same. You know? ooh, I love that. I love that. I feel ex like exactly the same way. Uh, and really, truth of the matter is the bigger a business gets, the bigger the problems become. Uh, and you have to become more and more flexible. And the good news is as you're growing, if you're growing, that means your business is still alive. And that's a good, good sign. And as long as you're growing, you're already to grow, you had to already have been flexible and continue to be so and grow mm -hmm. in that flexibility to where your mindset is now, you know what, I've been through a lot looking back at what happened then. And now this is coming at me, it might be a little bigger, but I got this because, exactly. you know, it's mm -hmm. not like this is the first time any weird thing has cropped up. Just like, you right. know, when you have a show and certain things aren't working in the background and <laughs> you sit there waiting <laughs> and wondering what is going on. Um, yeah. And so you just go with it. You have fun. Uh, make the mm -hmm. best of it. Look, everyone is human. Everyone, there's nobody perfect on the planet. Uh, there's no technology perfect on the planet. So you just make the best of it and be flexible. So thanks for that. Um, I would imagine that you enjoy reading. I see lots of certificates on your wall. That's cool. And I see a mm -hmm. quote in the back that you just talked about. Proceed as a success uh, is something. It's hard to read. Oh, it says, um, pro proceed as if success is inevitable. Ah, love it. Proceed as if success is inevitable. Those are great to have around and reminders mm -hmm. uh, all over the place. And so right. I've read many business related books over uh, the past several years, and I could, I could mention a few, but for you, if you could think of just one, what would you say would be the one business related book that has inspired you or impacted you the most thus far? I think one book that really made an impact um, in my life is a book called The Success System mm -hmm. That Never Fails by W. Clement Stone. Um, he, he was from Chicago and um, he talked a lot in that book about inspiration to action, um, know-how and activity knowledge. So, you know, it's all about why, why do you get out of bed every morning to do your job? You know, is it what, what, what motivates you at the end of the day, right? And then know-how is like knowing your products, your services, your competitors, all that important stuff that you need to know, right? And then activity knowledge is like uh, what's going to get you to the next step, you know? Is it going to be making phone calls, networking, sending out emails? And how is it that for you, um, you like to do that, right? Because Personally, like I don't like going to networking events, so I don't, <laughs> unless it's like it's something that I really need to go to. I, I avoid going to them, so I find other ways to, to um, get clients, right? And but I think out of those three steps, the most important one really is inspiration to action, because you might have all the information about your products and the benefits and why it's the best and all this stuff, but if you're not motivated with you know that bigger why than making sales or making money you and the in the short term you're you're really going to fail you know you might be good for a year or two but you don't you don't have that drive to keep going every day out there and you know a quote from that book that i really liked um it would say like great opportunities um come from like a door hinge so you know just opening a door what really holds the door is the little hinges right and um, I always think about that when you're walking into a new place or meeting new people, you have to open the, a door to get there. So, yeah, I, I really like the book. It's kind of an older book, but it has a lot of great information, you know, 
Thank you for that. I wrote it down, and I will be buying that right when the show is over as well. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm reading something called, a, I think it's called Atomic Habits, and I can't remember. It's Chris Reed or something. I, I, my thing with names is incredible. but uh, And I keep reading all these great – I just finished Elon Musk. Oh, my gosh, what a great read that was. What That, that guy is a genius, and he's also a little <laughs> off-kilter, yeah, but – He's um, on another level. He is, yeah. truly, in, in many yeah. ways. Even, um, oh my gosh, I can't think. Bill Gates uh, mm -hmm. even spoke highly of him, saying how he's different uh, than Bill Gates. And Bill Gates is also very, very intellectually sound and way yeah. up there. Uh, mm -hmm. And, yeah, he's just, he's a, he's a different individual, and he's, he's changing a lot of lives. One person. And how many times have you ever thought to yourself, I've done this, that, you know, I'd love to change the world, but I'm just one person. How can I do that? Right? right and you know it's just inch by inch it's a cinch kind of thing but mm -hmm. that being said it just seems like a big lofty goal well i think elon musk has achieved it already and he continues to go forward so yeah, yeah keep reading and thank you for that uh the, the success system that never fails is that correct correct mm -hmm. fantastic so i recommend everyone read that it had great impact on lorena it's her go-to uh speaking of go-to you know we've had many people come through our lives um you know, yeah. in and out, those that have inspired us, those that maybe haven't, that we say, well, I've learned what not to do, and I've learned <laughs> now what to do. Um, right. And it could be someone you know personally that you've met in person. It could be someone that you've just read about, you've never met, or it could be someone that's no, no longer even with us that had a great right. impact on you. If you were to pick one person, who would you say has had the greatest impact and inspiration on you thus far? Right. Good question. Um, I would say, you know, besides my parents, which I think is like everybody's, um, they're both business owners. But um, besides them, I would say like Oprah was a, a big inspiration growing up, you know, um, from her story that she grew up in the 50s and 60s in, I think, Mississippi, to now being, you know, one of the most successful women um, that's still around. Um, and seeing her, how she's been able to go from a TV reporter to her own her own show to being a producer to an actor now having her own TV show you know and how she's had to really change herself throughout different phases in her career just to continue being successful but always doing something that she's passionate about um, I think is really important in life you know in general um, it seems that I like people from Chicago it's the second person I mentioned no um, so yeah. yeah. And being passionate about something is also important. I've read uh, and seen and heard so many stories on both sides of the fence. Some will say, you gotta do what you're passionate about. And others say, forget that, you gotta do what makes money. Um, like, you know. Yeah, you know or something in, in the middle, you know? Or <laughs> something that, in the middle, I yeah. spend all day talking about stuff. And it, if you are, it better be something you, you really like. Uh, uh, maybe not your passion, but something you enjoy talking about, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah, because it's hard enough as it is. Now, can you imagine doing something just for money that mm -hmm. you don't enjoy? I can't. I'd rather right. not have the money because it's about enjoying life, the bottom line, mm -hmm. for me personally. Uh, it's not just yeah. about having money and the ability to buy things or, or to be free to do what I want. But if you're free to do what you want, then do something you like. Uh, yeah. I don't understand that, that philosophy personally. And I often mm -hmm. think that uh, those that have that opinion, and I'm not, I'm not calling anyone out because I can't even think of an individual, but they are out there. Uh, but those that have that thought process are at a point in their life where they have yet to achieve a level of success financially, um, yeah. to have experienced it, to understand that it's not all about money. Uh, money does buy things. It does help you. Uh, you can scale your business. You can grow your business. You can serve more people. You can have yeah. the flexibility now. We're talking about that word a lot to do more things, to, to hire more people, to expand your business, uh, to have freedom. It's, it's all about the freedom of time. It's not about money. It's what money can help to afford you uh, going mm -hmm. forward. That, these are my opinions. Uh, you might have, you're nodding a lot, so I think you're agreeing. <laughs> and this is also for the entire audience who's watching, listening right now. So yeah, it's uh, amazing. Um, Oprah, great. She's an amazing mm -hmm. woman, wow. I mean, so successful. You can tell she works extremely hard. It's in her demeanor. And every show she does, uh, she's a true professional. Uh, yeah. And yeah, that's a great inspiration to have for sure. Um, 
amazing. So I, I look forward to seeing you on her upcoming show. There you go. Yeah, I'm gonna be on the on the own network pretty soon, right? Cool. Is you know I've lost touch. Is she still on on uh, doing a show right now, a live show? No, she has like her own TV channel. Okay, cool. Yeah. Very cool. I knew she was moving on to something bigger. I just didn't know if she was yeah. actively in front of the camera doing shows herself. Yeah, I think she does like on Sundays or something. She interviews uh, authors and things like that. Something she is very, very good at too, interviewing yeah. people for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it takes, um, you know, I, I said in the very beginning, right, when we're building a business, you know, you, the three major components, mind, body, business, and in business, that requires a number of skill sets um, to be successful in your business. Now, I said it's okay to delegate many of those if you don't possess them, mm -hmm. but I don't want to do that at a fault to where I say you don't need to acquire any. <laughs> right. So really, if it's in your wheelhouse, if you know it's something you can achieve and it's not going to be really so far away that you can't do it, then you should consider um, acquiring that new skill set if it's that important to growing your business. Uh, mm -hmm. And so it does take skills on your part, not, not talking about you, Lorena, but uh, people yeah. that I'm, we're talking to. Um, it does take time. I, I have spent tens of thousands of dollars, I'm not kidding, in, uh, in training, in, in bettering myself in many different ways, including mindset, including physicality, including mm -hmm. business skill sets and sales. Uh, I've spent a lot of money in training and I, I don't have any regrets doing that. Uh, to acquire the necessary skill sets to become successful. And there are like major ones that you really need as a baseline of foundation, because then you're going, when you go to lead others, they're gonna look at you and go, well, what do you know how to do, right? They're gonna be scrutinizing your every move. So you better uh, have some good skill sets on your own. So for you, yeah. uh, Lorena, um, you know, let, there's a lot of them. If you could pinpoint it down to maybe just three for you, this would not be for anyone else, what would you say mm -hmm. are the top three skills needed to become as successful as you have as an entrepreneur? Another ballpark question there. Um, <laughs> I would say, you know, top three skill sets that, that you would need are, besides, you know, the positive mental attitude, that's, you know, key, but um, always being determined and not again getting lost on on your goal or your why um being able to be teachable even though you might be you know the leader or the owner or whatever you also need to be teachable from other people that know more about you um and then i would say you know the the third one a good skill um to have yeah, if you don't know how to do something, delegate it. And I think that's something I'm learning myself because I like to do everything. I don't like delegating. I feel sometimes like if I don't do it, you know, they're not going to do it the right way. But just have um, trust in those that you hire or that work for you, um, that they'll do it to the best of, of their ability. So not micromanaging, you know. That's great, great advice, especially the micromanaging part. Don't micromanage. Uh, no one no one enjoys being micromanaged. And by that, yeah. if you have never heard that term, that's basically having someone stand over you and tell you not just what to do and also when to do it, and then the worst, how to do it. It's like, right. well, then you want a robot because I, <laughs> I am a human and I'm not going to do it exactly the way you do it I, because I'm different than you. And that's, exactly. a, that's kind exactly. of my definition of a micromanager. So thank you for bringing that one up. But yeah. I will say of those, I think uh, being teachable is difficult for many uh, because mm -hmm. it involves this something that we all have, every one of us that we call ourselves human, and that is ego. Yeah. And one of the greatest things every one of you can do, I can tell Lorena's already done it, is to take that hat off, that I know that hat where you know everything, take it off and set it aside and just say, you know what, I may know that and I wonder what else I can learn. Exactly. Yeah, because I think that helps avoid burning out because if you're the one doing the sales, the marketing, the customer service, you know, tech support, everything that goes into a business, right? You're one person, you know, <laughs> so. Yeah, and that's yeah. why, well, I was gonna say that one of the most powerful ones in there, skills, is that 
of how to delegate because that mm -hmm. brings with it so many other things. And you touched on a few of them and that's leadership skills, right? It's how yeah. to lead effectively others and what, what there are different styles. I've seen many. I've, I've witnessed, Lorena, I have witnessed this firsthand within 20 feet of me, a manager, thankfully wasn't mine. I just happened to be in there visiting, it's a long story. Mm -hmm. He had his entire group in this room and they were having a meeting and out of nowhere, cause I could just hear, I was off to the side. I wasn't listening right. to every word. All of a sudden I hear yelling and it's the manager berating one person in front of the entire group. And I just yeah. shook my head and here's the sad part. This guy was, and still is my friend manager. I had no idea that that was his management skill or his management approach. I wouldn't call it a skill. That was a horrible uh, approach in my opinion. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it's those kinds of things that you learn or that you should uh, really take into account and think twice before reacting. If that's, you know, if you, if so, you don't like something, then take them to the side, take them into your office, talk to them right. individually, work it out there, but do not make a public display of, of somebody that you're unhappy with. That was, right. Yeah, so don't, don't embarrass them in front of their coworkers. That's not correct. Yeah, yeah and that, that's that's one extreme. Another is on the flip side is, is this is the way I do it. I train my people so that they have the skills to leave. Mm -hmm. And inter cool. interesting is a, a past um, guest of mine, Tom Antion, who is an internet marketing multimillionaire. He does that very same thing. And, you know, the only thing you have to concern yourself with is when they do leave, because you're doing it with that purpose. They will leave eventually. Right. Some will. Some will love you so much they don't ever want to leave. Uh, you just want them to be as happy as they can be. Um, yeah. But when they do leave, you, you have to train the next person that comes on. And you can develop systems to make that less painful mm -hmm. than it needs mm -hmm. to be. Uh, so, I yeah. say, you know, treat people like adults, not children, you know, exactly. And, you know, delegation includes training, having training uh, mm -hmm. ready for them. Uh, yeah. it, it includes a lot. So that, that that was a big one. When you said delegate, my eyes got big. Uh, mm -hmm. So thank you for that, because that's that's a huge, huge one. Um, and we're talking about, uh, you know, there are people out there that love to go after what I call the quick kill, which means make money at whatever the cost, you know, okay. make that sale and then don't nurture that customer. Walk away mm -hmm. from them because I made the sale, not knowing or realizing or even thinking that that customer could be worth well more than they just spent over the next year to two to five to 10 years, depending on your products. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's a quick kill mentality uh, that really ends up killing <laughs> the business of the person that has that mentality. I've seen it. Uh, I, I can think of one gentleman right now as I'm saying this, and uh, that's not a recipe for long-term success. You've been at this for 13 years. You're doing something right. And, mm -hmm. I'm, and kudos to you and your mom for doing that. Thank um, you. Yeah, thank you. And the reason I'm gonna say thank you is because I'm gonna ask you exactly how you came about doing that. And I know there might be many moving parts on that question, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> You know, just if you could explain how it is you have been able to achieve this long term success that you and your mom are having at this moment. Yeah. So I think um, one of the main things is definitely following up with customers or prospects. If somebody calls, answer them in a timely manner within, you know, 24 hours or whatever system you have in place or send them a quick text message. Hey, I saw your call. I'm going to call you back when I'm out of the meeting or whatever the case might be. Um, you know, I can say like we do um, health insurance and with, with um, that, the open enrollment starts now in November. And we've had clients with us for the past seven years who are like, you know, I only work with you because I know that you pick up the phone, that you um, talk to me with um, being able to understand what I'm getting myself into, you know. So they're very happy and, and that leads to even more success because if your customer is happy, they're going to stay with you and they're also going to refer you to their friends and family. So I think customer service is key and not just, you know, selling something today and never reaching out to your client again. That just doesn't make any sense, you know. Um, there's like some principle out there that says that, you know, like 20% of your 80% of your business comes from like 20% of your clients is some type of number like that. 
and and you know that that makes sense if you focus more on the people that you already have that that will lead to to more success in the future you know instead of always trying to find new people work with your existing clients that you already built that relationship with you know absolutely yeah it's uh it's harder to find new clients than it is to uh, keep a, you know a current one and resell to that person right. it takes a lot of time effort and money to bring in a yeah. brand new client because you have to build up that know, like, and trust factor and all the things mm -hmm. that go with it. When you have right. a client already, they've already developed some sort of relationship with you to become your client. And then now they have experienced yours, yours, Lorena's, your customer service, your level of caring mm -hmm. for them. And so it's so much easier to say, hey, it's time to, it's time to look at, relook at your policy and see if there's some changes we can make. And by the exactly. way, I have something else that just came across my desk that you might be interested in. And they'd be much more likely to say yes than someone who never heard of you before. So definitely. Yeah. Uh, and, and I, I appreciate and something else, you know, I would say is also being flexible because like before we used to do everything the old school way in insurance. It's like, you know, going to somebody's house, knocking on their door, you know, that across the kitchen table type of conversation. And we've been able to transition everything to do it over the phone or the computer with our clients. And just being able to do that and being able to explain to the clients like this is how we're going to work from now on um, is, is really good because we get to help more people as well, you know. Absolutely. And that's a huge point you just made there is the ability to do this virtually, meaning, yeah. you know, from your office to their home and vice versa and having your mom involved and the, the cool thing is with that and I, i've worked with other um health professionals in the past in similar lines and what that does for you and and everyone in your industry is you can then go out and become licensed in other states and serve yeah. those people as well so that even helps you to scale your business and you're no longer hindered and constrained to how far you can drive to meet a client, right, in a car. Exactly. Yeah, or, oh, I forgot you were coming today and you just drove two hours, you know, for, especially with the traffic here in Miami, you know, anywhere is <laughs> an hour at least. So. Yeah, yeah, that's that's huge. And and that's where you said is flexibility, very uh, key to being, uh, to getting that long-term success. I mean, yeah. flexibility, that's, almost, that's a daily thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's almost hourly. We saw that at the onset yeah. of this show. It started going a little wonky on me. Um, and that's, that's good because that, I, you know, it's good for people to know that haven't been through that, that it is an imperfect world and becoming a successful person takes you through nonstop imperfection all day long, every day, multiple times a day. It's really more about how you react to it than what happens to you, which I always say happens for you. Um, things happen for you because it's how you react that makes the difference in how successful you're going to be. Uh, right. more than what happened for you. Is, would you agree with that? Definitely, yeah. Absolutely. Um, and that that takes a different mindset, right? It takes, you know, being an entrepreneur, um, what do you think, uh, Lorena? Is that easy? <laughs> no. <laughs> it is not easy. Uh, is it gratifying? The, yeah, for sure. Instantly. You know? And mm -hmm. I'm doing that so everybody can watch and see you. Uh, instantly, she said yes, and her, her face went to a big smile uh, because yeah. it is gratifying. When you work as hard as an entrepreneur does who's successful at their business, um, the gratification comes at the end of the day when you've served that other client, that one more client. You've resolved an issue, a problem that they needed solving, or you've overcome a hurdle that's been um, nagging your business or you for some time. And it's a nonstop ever moving <laughs> target mm -hmm. of things that I think make life enjoyable. Uh, some others would say, boy, that makes it a pain in the butt. It, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a mindset thing. And you know what? That's why there aren't 80% uh, entrepreneurs and only 20% employees. It's the other way around. It's actually more like 2% entrepreneurs and the rest uh, are okay with working with someone else and God bless mm -hmm. them. Uh, so yeah, being an entrepreneur takes, it takes work. It's not yeah. easy. So yeah. I, I'm saying only I'm only saying this for those that are watching that haven't gone down deep down that path. You may have dabbled in it, dipped your toes in the water, maybe uh, maybe joined a network marketing company or something. Right. And, uh, you know, it's that I've done all that. I've done all this. I'm not saying anything I haven't done. And I can look back and go, yeah, that's 
that's when that was in the beginning stages when I thought I knew what this was all about. I had no mm-hmm. clue. I had no clue yeah. just how much I would be tried, uh, challenged and and how much I absolutely loved all that. I didn't realize mm-hmm. it. I was like, man, I'd like it just to be autopilot, you know, because right. You're going to you're going to work, what, two more years, uh, Lorena, and it's just going to be on autopilot and you're going to be able to go lay in your hammock and have an umbrella drink and just sway in the breeze. Right. It, that's how exactly. it works. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And what did you say uh, earlier about what it would mean if it was that easy? I mean, if it just happened automatically and there was nothing to look forward to the next day to, to go after. Yeah, that, that would be very, very boring. You know, we, we would quickly, I think as humans, we would quickly be bored. Like, okay, now what? I've, I've you know, I've sat here in this hammock for five <laughs> days and, you know, I'm sunburned now. What? <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's so interesting that you say that. <laughs> uh, my wife and I, you know, we, we go on vacations and we just, I mean, I'm i am 55. She's, I'm not going to say how old she is. Uh, that would be rude. Uh, I love her. It doesn't matter. The thing is, we would go on these vacations and then we would look for, you know, the best times to go out and lay out by the pool. And mm-hmm. I, I kid you not, just recently, it was like a couple of vacations ago, trips ago, we, we went and did that and we laid there. And I, I'm telling you, I don't know if it was 10 minutes and right. at the same time, we kind of looked at each other was like, what, what do you want to do now? Because it's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dad, you're just Too sitting there doing that. nothing. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not we, wired we, that way. I can't in do Miami, that. You walk, to, you walk out to your car and it's like, okay, like I'm done. Forget the beach, you know, it's too hot. <laughs> <laughs> And ours isn't just that it's too hot or I mean, it was glo- I mean, I could be standing in the pool, staying cool, but mm-hmm. I'm sitting there going, I'm not having, I'm not making an impact on anything. I'm not, you know, my mind's wired to work, to run, to, to continually think mm-hmm. and create. Uh, yeah, you need downtime. So 10 minutes is enough. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I've asked this of many people, uh, Lorena, and I, I have a feeling yours is the same is like, you know, let's say there is a goal uh, in your mind of absolute ultimate total success and that once you reach that level i mean whatever that is for you in your mind's eye and you reach it and now you see you've you've made it i mean you you are the happiest person on earth now because you've reached the top and there's this thing up there called the ceiling and you can go no farther how would that feel i think it would feel good for about five minutes and then after that, you're looking for another mountain to climb, another, you know, another peak to reach, you know, um, because that, that's just how, how we are. Like, you know, you, you reach a goal and it's like, wow, I can't believe I, I reached that goal. And then your brain is instantly thinking, OK, what else can I do? You know? Yeah. What's next? It's kind of like you mm-hmm. get a, a brand new car and it has that new car smell. And, yeah. you know, and not, it isn't long until you like. Okay, I want something better. I want something different. I'm going to upgrade. And mm-hmm. what's what's next? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's mm-hmm. how true entrepreneurs are wired. Uh, and, you know, I don't know if that can be taught. I think it can be nurtured and developed into a bigger um, energy, I guess, to say that, you know, you become more of a person that wants to just continue on and never stop and never be satisfied. I think that's the big word is... Uh, I don't think we're ever satisfied. It doesn't mean we're dissatisfied, right? Right. We're loving the journey. That's the that's the difference. Is we're I, enjoying I the journey. Well, between like an employee and an entrepreneur, you know, I, I have I, I joked around one time, like you know, as women, people always ask us, like, oh, how are your kids, or you know, how many kids do you have, without even assuming that we might not have kids, right? Mm. So, so I think like it would be funny if you just walk up to people and be like, oh, hey, how's your business going? <laughs> you know, like it, it would be random, like just to assume that everybody should be an entrepreneur. Right. Yeah. With that perspective, because I think the mentality is totally different. You know, when you're an entrepreneur, you have, you know, X, Y, Z job set that you need to do every day. You come into work from nine to five or whatever it is, right? With the lunch hour break, um, you have your set days for holidays and things like that. But then when you're an entrepreneur, people think that all that you do is like sit in front of the computer, <laughs> chat with people and, you know, and then go, go lay by the pool. You know, I have a pool here. I lay by the pool every now and then, but that's not 
my every day, you know, and, and definitely I don't work your regular hours nine to five. I probably work more hours a week at the end of the day than, than your typical um, employee, right? But it, it all depends, you know, what time of the year it is, what, what's going on in my business. But um, yeah, there's a lot of moving parts. Once you really take that plunge and you don't have that safety net of, okay, I know I'm going to get paid this much every month or every, yeah, every month or every two weeks, right? Um, so you kind of stop living paycheck to paycheck now, but um, it's really all on you to make your, your business successful, you know, and whether you fail or succeed, it's all a life lesson, you know, to decide maybe entrepreneurship wasn't for you and you should go back to the nine to five, you know, because I don't think everybody's meant to be an entrepreneur <laughs> at the end. You know, it sounds harsh because there's a lot of this um, raw, raw, positive stuff about, you know, be your own business owner, you know, start your own business, you work from the internet, you know, look at my Lamborghini and all this stuff, you know, which that's great. But what did that person have to do day in, day out to get there? And did they do that in a year? Did it take them 10 years to do that? You know, everybody's different. So, yeah, I think we're always going to have employees because, again, we need to delegate as business owners. But I don't think everybody, again, is meant to be a, an entrepreneur. It's a totally different mindset. And, you know, it, this might sound harsh, but it's kind of like talent. It's either you're good at playing an instrument um, and yeah, maybe you've had lessons, but there's that extra ability that some people have that other people just don't have, even if they have all that music theory knowledge and all that stuff, there's just something there that they'll never have, you know? So I think books and all that is great, but I think until people don't try it, they won't really know. That's, I, I, I cannot tell you how, how thankful I am that you said that. In several times you said this may come up as harsh. That's why it's the best thing you could do to tell people because you're telling the truth. Uh, yeah. And it's best that people learn the truth now rather than waste time, uh, which would end up being a waste of time if they were to say, well, I think I can do this. I'm going to give it a go. But now that I just heard this, if someone reacted to say, well, gosh, it sounds too hard. I'm really not interested. Then good. Good. Right. And you will be happier. It's all about what you choose to do, not what other people think you should do, not how you look to other people. Like, well, you don't have a Lamborghini. You're not an entrepreneur, so you must not be all that. Like, no, right. the, each right. person needs to do what they're happy doing uh, and yeah. not be worried about the scrutiny that comes as a result. You can do very well as an employee and make a lot of mm -hmm. money. I've seen many yeah, times of course. and of have course. those wonderful things and have that paycheck come in every week or two weeks or however often you get paid. Yeah, because some people need that peace of mind because mm -hmm. they have responsibilities that, you know, they need that health insurance th through their job for some reason. They need that 401k. They need certain things in place, right? So yeah, of course, do do you, you know, like they say. Yeah, and <laughs> in one word, that's called certainty. They want certainty. They want to know. Mm -hmm. uh, and they want predictability too. Uh, that's part oh, of it. for sure. And not for everybody sure. has the same... Uh, uh, personality traits and that's a, that's what's beautiful about the human race we're all different so none of this is a judgment on anyone no. on either no. side of the fence uh, because judgments could be passed both ways really uh, it's just we are human uh, you know we're given God-given talents and abilities and we can nurture those and make them even better but if you weren't given certain talents uh, it's gonna be tough if you try to fit a square peg into a round hole it's like uh, I liken it to sports um, you know, like exactly. basketball, if you're not born with a physical um, abilities or even stature, like many that have made it all the way are very tall human beings. Mm -hmm. I mean, a relatively uh, average guard is 6'5". That's tall. If you walk mm -hmm. down the street, I'm looking up. I'm 6'2". 6'5 right. is tall. Uh, mm -hmm. And if you're not born with that, you don't, not everybody has to be tall, but the odds are they go down and, and drastically the shorter you are. Uh, and yeah. that's just part of it. You were either born with it or you weren't. Uh, and that's kind of a, an analogy to give to those of you that might, you know, give it a shot if you're interested, if you're curious. I'm not, you know, right. I don't think Lorraine or I are trying to stop you from going mm -hmm. after it. We just want you to know that it's not for everybody. It, it takes it takes a lot of persistence and discipline. You said in the beginning, I forget the word, uh, you have to be very determined. Yeah. 
very determined and that means like all the time and have a big yeah. why everything we've been talking about fantastic um so being that it's been super easy for you all this time <laughs> and i always say that jokingly <clears throat> you know sometimes what we do to be to gain or just to stay afloat sometimes uh we yeah. have to give way with something else in our life in order that we can you know we have to make a decision we either put more of our time and effort maybe money into building the business and nurturing it then we do something else in our life and that would be uh just to put it in one word called a sacrifice right um mm -hmm. so to become a successful entrepreneur i know i've made uh, my great deal of sacrifices and learned from some of them that uh some i should not have done but i learned from them and have changed right. um if you were to think back uh, for yourself, what kind, you know, just to help others to understand what the life of a successful entrepreneur is, what kind yeah. of sacrifices can you recall making on, while you were growing up to the point of success you're at now? Yeah, so I started doing insurance, you know, working for myself basically when I was 19, 20, 19. Yeah, I got my license when I was 19. And I was in college at the time. And, you know, I always thought, um, one, one of the main sacrifices I, I really did do, I guess, you know, very early on was like my social life. I would like rarely go out on the weekends or like at night because A, the majority of people I would see would be like, oh, come by at seven, come by at eight, you know. And between that type of work schedule, that was mainly done during the nighttime. And then also going to school full time, I would have to, you know, study, make time to study and, and do all that. So my social life kind of stagnated a little bit, I would say, like, in, in my 20s. Um, it's not to say I didn't have a social life, but, like, I didn't have the traditional college experience, let's say, because it was a lot of, of responsibility, you know, um, on top of me. So I, I would definitely say that, you know. Um, for me, I was never into the, like, the party life or anything like that either. So it's not like I have missed out on anything really. Um, but I would say that that would be my biggest sacrifice, especially very early on in, in my career, like the first, I would say from like 19 to 25, 26 around there. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that'd be a tough time to, uh, make that kind of sacrifice because that's often when we are really developing our big social skills, meeting, uh, amazing people that may become lifelong friends. Uh, maybe right. even a spouse uh, is in the mix or boyfriend or girlfriend. No, oh. maybe that's that's why I'm still single. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You heard it. She's single. She's available. I'm just kidding. <laughs> there you Miami, go. Florida. Look her up um, with respect. But uh, yeah, that, and that's the thing. It's all about choices. So the whole yeah. the whole key there is. You know, like this book I'm reading now, um, Atomic Habits is called. Atomic mm -hmm. meaning little bitty, tiny habits, making mm -hmm. making strides every single day, uh, that it's more important to focus on the system rather than the end goal. It's the system that's getting you to mm -hmm. that goal that you should be focusing on. I'm like, wow, this is awesome stuff. I just started yeah, like, reading what, it. What are you doing every day, yes. right? The, the little things that really matter for today, not, you right. know, yeah. You yeah, get that and, that you get. yeah. And being persistent, and that's usually the hardest thing. We're, we all want instant gratification. So, mm -hmm. you know what? I worked out for a week and I don't see another, I don't see any growth on my arm. I'm done. Right? It's, uh, yeah. it, it takes time. Everything takes time. And I think uh, one of the common misconceptions, uh, you know, and I've seen this in network marketing arenas, especially. I used to be a co owner of a network marketing company, and we didn't do this, but I see it a lot where it, they're not promising it but they're showing that it can happen, that you can become wealthy very quick with very minimal right. effort. They don't mm -hmm. come out and say those words, but they sure make it look that way. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, you know, so just send somebody something here on your phone and yeah. they'll watch a video and instantly you wanna, you know, buy your product or yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. And so that, that's kind of sad because it's very misleading, I think, for people. And then they try like some network marketing thing and it doesn't work out. And th then they don't want to hear about anything ever. Right. You know? Yeah, and it yeah. kills their dream. And and to be clear, not all network marketing companies no, do this or, or are guilty of this. There are many that are high, high quality, high end. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are enough. You know, bad news travels faster than good, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. those that use the, the quick kill mentality, you know, get them in at all costs rather than tell the truth. 
um, that's what gave MLM a bad rap. Uh, it is an, it is a genius business model. Mm -hmm. It's just mm -hmm. the way that it's been implemented and executed in some cases that has given a bad name to the whole industry. I still love it. I think it's a great industry. Um, yeah. and it's, it it's just, just like insurance, you know, you always think of like the pushy salesperson <laughs> when a lot of what we do is education, you know, so it's like everything. And you have someone like Lorena who will actually call you and, <laughs> and you know make sure that you're being taken care of it's not just thank you for your business next customer uh, right. not with them that's how they've achieved long-term success so mm -hmm. again model success look at this woman to my left and model her copy her i'm sure she won't mind and by the way we're getting close to the end here a lot closer than i thought there's one question i like to ask every guest that comes on this show and it's uh it's pretty empowering it's a it's a cool one um, and the thing is, when it, when I ask it, just take your time if you need to. Some people get the response right away. Others take a little bit of time. Whichever for you works fine is uh, is fine either way. Uh, but before I do that, real quick, I promised everyone that they could enter to win a five night stay at a five star luxury resort in Mexico. Compliments of PowerTexting.com. Here is how you do just that. You can now, we give you permission, pull out your smartphone and punch in this phone number as if you were going to text it. Punch in 661-535-1624. And then in the message area, as if you're going to type a message to that number, type in the word PEAK, P-E-A-K, as in reach your peak. So again, that number is 661-535-1624 and type in the word PEAK, P-E-A-K, and that text will be going through the very system that is powertexting.com our wonderful sponsors they're the ones offering this wonderful five night vacation state a five star luxury resort in mexico and by the way the very owner of the company himself has gone on these vacations the very vacations that they sponsor and so i just wanted you to understand and recognize and realize that you're not going to a place where they're going to shuffle you off into a room and pitch a timeshare for five hours one of the two days you're there it's not like that he's gone three times and each time has had an amazing time it's it's just like going on another vacation um, no different so go ahead and do that right away and then we're going to come back and ask this wonderful wonderful show ending question and then we're going to also give you an opportunity on how to connect with Lorena before we sign off but first the question and and just to kind of ease you uh take Take the nerves off if you have any, because you have quite the poker face, Lorena. I have to admit. Um, <laughs> so, so told, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing: uh, there is no such thing as a wrong answer to this question, and the, it's very cool because it's really a personal thing. And not to get nervous about that, because the only correct answer, the only correct answer is yours. It's unique to you. So whatever it is, it's correct. You're already guaranteed success with this answer to the question. So with that being said, are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Fantastic. So Lorena Tomasini, how do you define success? That's a great question. I think um, success is different for everybody. Um, but for me, success means that I can manage my own time, go on vacation when and where I want to. Um, yeah, and it means, you know, I, I get to do more of what I enjoy than things that I have to do, you know. Um, success for me is not really like, uh, for like money, it's not really a number, but it's just being able to do, buy what I want, um, have all my bills paid is, you know, success. I think that's a basic one, but it's very important um and yeah and then being able to like save money for the future is also important and that's how i i define success for me yeah love it and i've asked that question of every past guest expert no two to date have answered it the same exact way and it's still the case so it's fantastic yeah. because it's unique to every individual i love this part of the show um, and I love it, manage my own time. So really, we're, we're talking about freedom to do what you want, when you want. Uh, yeah. Freedom was one word I remember, uh, I asked a question before about um, 
what is the your favorite thing about being an entrepreneur? And instantly the answer was freedom. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I I use the term liberation. You know, you're liberated. You're free of. You know, it just feels more empowering to say liberated to me. I don't know. It's just I like that word. Um, so cool. Thank you so much for that. Now. Uh, for folks out there, oh, you also have a complimentary gift to give to folks as well. So I wanted to turn it over to you to explain that, and I'll pull you up next to your website. If you're ready, go ahead and tell folks yeah. what they need to do and how to do it. Awesome. So um, I'm offering a free financial protection review for everybody out there. It's really just so that we can know what you have protected and what you don't as far as your income and, you know, your financial future. And it's really eye-opening once you answer these set of questions. Um, and that's complimentary as well as the, the review. So fantastic. So to be clear, let me uh, split this up. To be clear, uh, what you want to do first is go to their website, and that is at Malm, I-N-S. So it's M-A-L-M. -M. So Mama Albert. Larry, mama, <laughs> uh, <laughs> INS, which is short for insurance, uh -huh. .com. So Malm, ints, INS, .com. And then there you see, like you see on the screen now, at the very top, very top, that blue button that says, yes, let's review. Mm -hmm. You want to click on that and then fill out that uh, form, and then uh, they will then get back to you, most likely Lorena herself. And you can see that she is a wonderful person. She is heart-centered. She's going to take care of you. It's not going to be a hard sell of any kind. She's just going to help you. Uh, and that's why she ended up coming on this show, because those are the type of people I love to be acquainted with uh, and to bring onto the show so that we can share wonderful people like Lorena with the entire globe. So thank you so much for that, Lorena. And is that also the best place to connect with you personally if you're open to that? Or is there another way you'd like people to yeah, get in touch? Yeah, besides my website, um, you can call me or shoot me a text at 786-236-1792. Um, you know, during regular business hours, don't text me at like 3 in the morning. But yeah. Fantastic. That is also on the website. You see that in the upper mm -hmm. right in the green little button under English and Espanol. Mm -hmm. Love it. Sweet. Well, thank you so much. Um, this has been an amazing, amazing show. I'm looking over my notes. I wrote a bunch. I hope everyone else did too. I mean, I'm, I'm the director, the talent, the producer, everything, <laughs> the host, and it's hard to see it, but uh, I've got notes written throughout every page of, of my sheets here. Uh, and I'm going to go grab that book. Thank you so much for that, Lorena. Yeah. That's a great um Thank you so much for having me on. Um, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Um, and for all of you that have watched uh, live and those of you that are going to watch and listen on the recording, thank you for your time. And that is going to do it for this edition of the Mind Body Business Show. Do you have any final parting words for our wonderful viewers out there, Lorena? Yeah, my my final thoughts would be, you know, take action. Don't just think about things, but actually implement whatever suggestion or whatever you want to do in life. Fantastic. Take action. I cannot agree more. Great advice. Mm -hmm. All right. To all of you who are watching and listening, we thank you. Have a wonderful evening. Uh, Lorena, you as well. Thank you for coming on. And we'll see you on the next edition of the Mind Body Business Show. So long for now and be blessed, everyone. Thank you for watching and listening. This has been the Mind Body Business Show with Brian Kelly.